Hello everyone and welcome to another part of the Unity scripting tutorial. Uh, in this video we'll be figuring out how to make one object in Unity follow another object around. And of course as usual there are a lot of ways to do this but in this video we'll be discussing two different ways. One will be using the look at function in Unity and the other one will be just using vectors to figure out where to go. So first we will need an object to move around and as usual we'll make a cube to move around. and an object as the target and we'll make that a sphere. So we just now need to get started by creating a script that will move our cube around. Let's do that and call it look at follow and attach our script to the cube. Now let's open it up and see what we can do. First we need to know where the sphere is at all times and to do that we just need um, a reference to the transform of the sphere. So let's make a public transform and call it mTarget. And since that's attached, we can drag the sphere and put it onto the cube. Now we have our target and we can start working with that. Um, so the look at function in Unity, what it does, it makes the z axis, the local z axis of any object points to point towards the position of another object. So let's say we have our cube and we can do transform.lookat and give it the m target position. Now if we run the scene there we go. As you can see the z axis of the cube is always looking at it. Um, if we move the sphere around, the cube will look around, and if we click on the cube, the z axis still pointed towards the sphere. And we can use that to just translate along that axis that's always looking at the sphere, and that will make the cube always follow the sphere around. So let's go back to Unity and do transform.translate, and we will translate along the z axis. So First, we would need a speed for our cube, so let's make a float of speed and give it a speed of 10.2. And in our z axis, we can multiply the speed by the time dot delta time. Go back to Unity, run, and if we move the sphere around, as you can see, the cube will always follow it around. But you might not want these jitters that happen once the cube gets there because the problem what's happening is that the cube gets a bit too close to the sphere and then overshoots it but then after it overshoots it it looks back at the sphere and goes another direction then overshoots again so it keeps jittering this way and to stop this all we need to do is just give it a value to tell the cube you need to stop once you're this close to the sphere so let's go back to our script and we will make this value a constant float because this value will never change and call it epsilon and give a value of let's say 0 0.1 so what we need to do now is just tell it if the transform.position minus the target.position because that will give us the distance between the two. Of course, we need to put these two in a bracket and then dot magnitude. And that will give us the distance of the two, the absolute distance between the two. So even if our cube is in the negative and the sphere is in the positive, it doesn't matter. It will always give us a positive value. And less, as long as this value is more than the epsilon value, we would just keep translating. If we go back to Unity and try to run it, as you can see the cube stopped jittering. Now if I move this sphere around, oh, the sphere, not the cube, it will start following it around. As soon as it gets close enough, it stops moving. So that is one way to make an object in Unity 
follow another object around. Now, there are issues with this way of doing things. The good thing about it is that it's very simple, right? So you just need three lines in the update function, and then you have yourself an object following another object around. But as you can see, it always has to look at that sphere. And sometimes you just want to rotate the object in another direction. You don't want it to always be looking at the object that you're following around. Maybe maybe it's hovering above it and it's following it from the top and you don't want it to always be pointing towards it. So what we can do to solve this is use vectors instead. And to use vectors, it's a bit more work to do, but of course you're going to get the same desired effect without making the object rotate. To do that, let's make our second script. So let's disable this script first so that both scripts don't run at the same time. And let's make a script called vector follow. Now, here it's going to be the exact same idea. We would need to know where the sphere is at all times. So let's make a public transform and call that mTarget go back to unity and attach the sphere to the cube as a target. Uh, we did not attach our script. There we go. And attach the sphere to the cube. Now, the way that the vector method works is that it figures out where the sphere is and where the cube is. And if you take the position of the sphere and subtract it from the cube, from the position of the cube, that will give you a vector pointing starting from the cube to the sphere. So let's start by doing that. So what we can do is create a vector tree and call that look direction. And in our update, the look direction is going to be equal to, as we said earlier, the position of the sphere, which is our target minus our transformed up position, which is the position of the cube. Now, we do have a, a direction, but the problem with this direction is that it's not a unit vector. It's not length of one. So as the cube and the sphere get further away, the speed will increase, and we don't want that. So to solve this, what we can do is say we want this vector, but the normalized version. And what this returns is a unit vector of the direction from the cube towards the sphere. So now that we have this, all we would need to do is transform.translate along that direction. So in the direction, multiplied by the time dot delta time, multiplied by we would need our speed. So let's create our speed again. So load m speed going to be equal to 10.0, just like the last one. And we can take our speed and translate by it. Now we have everything that we need. We would just run this and see what happens. As you can see, but it sure rings back. It will always follow it around, but it will jitter. And to solve this, we will do the exact same thing as the follow. Give it an epsilon value and only translate if the distances between the two are less than the epsilon value. It is the exact same amount of work. Of course, it might be, well, come think about it now. For Unity to make the object always look at another object might actually be more processor intensive than to just subtract two vectors and normalize them. So this actually might be more efficient, but of course you will not be able to look at the object while you're uh, going towards it. So if you have, let's say, a rocket in a game or something that always needs to look, that needs to look at the object at all times, um, using the look at function would be better that way. If you have an object that doesn't need to look at the other object, at all times, then using the vector is probably the better way to go. Now, if we run the scene again, as you can see, it stops moving. And now we know how to make an object follow 
another object around in Unity in two different ways. And this is going to be it for the video. So if you have any comments or feedback, please leave them in the comment section. Um, I will try to make videos more frequently. It's just that I've been very busy recently. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.